Hey guys, this is JM. I'm going to do a short video on interpreting the smart data from an NVMe SSD. Uh, I see a lot of people that don't quite understand how to monitor the health of an SSD and the endurance. So I'm going to just kind of clarify things and make it super easy. NVMe has standardized this across all SSDs, which makes it super easy because all drives that implement the NVMe spec uh, should be reporting this in the same way. Uh, it's much better than it used to be for SATA drives and, and other storage stuff. So um, yeah, so first for smart, a lot of people just download, uh, let's see, uh, a lot of people just download crystal disk info, which is fine. Uh, I'll show you that I will kind of prefer smart mon tools in the command line in Windows, even uh, because it just gives you a lot more information. It gives you the raw data. Um, so if, if I do download crystal disk info, I'm often just using the uh, zip version. And so, cause I don't like installing stuff, but you can see here uh, I'm running this. This is my um, just boot drive on my system. I have it in my, I have a Corsair MP600 Pro, one terabyte that I'm using on my Rocket Lake. Uh, my uh, gr my drive is sitting uh, um, in the M.2 slot right above the graphics card because it has a big heat sink on it, which is why it's running at uh, Gen 3x4 instead of uh, Gen 4x4. But so this um, data basically, so there's some cool stuff. You know, there's some good stuff about this uh, crystal disk info that I like, and there's some not good stuff, you know. I like that they give you the total host reads and writes up here and the power on hours and stuff, and power on count. These are nice. Um, and they give you a little health status here, 100%. Uh, this is backwards from the way NVMe reports it. You'll see NVMe reports percent used instead of percent remaining. Percent remaining would be like your gas gauge. You know, 100% is good, 0% you're out of gas, 0% you're out of endurance. Uh, percent used is actually the opposite. Um, you know, you're basically saying how much percentage are, are used for the SSD, uh, and this gives you the temperature. Um, and so, okay, so crystal disk info is okay. The default gives you the raw values here in hex. I think you can change it to binary and you can go do some some finagling if you wanted to dump the raw data. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little easier way. Uh, and if you go to smartmontools.org and download, um, this is the one I use for Linux. I use it for Windows, it's super powerful. It has in, in uh, Linux it has this thing called Smart D, which you can have it monitor the smart of your drives in the background and dump it to a CSV. This is super useful for hard drives to look at predictive fail and looking at when your hard drives are going to fail. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a later video. I think today we're just going to keep it to NVMe SSDs because there's a lot to know about smart just in NVMe. Um, so. You know, so basically you just download the package and install it in Windows, and then you're gonna change directory to you know, program files, smart mod tools, slash bin. You can see here, uh, my smart control.exe. So we're just gonna run this command. Uh, you can look at the dash help and it gives you all the commands. Um, but the ones we're gonna run today, if you do a dash dash scan, it should give you the drives in the system. Um, if I uh, look at this, uh, if I look at this system uh, here, uh, my Windows system, I just have one drive in here. So it's just gonna say my physical drive zero is slash dev slash SDA. Uh, I don't know, I think that these guys thought it would be easier to do that than like disk disk zero or disk, disk one or whatever, physical disk. If you're running this uh, on a Mac, you can do brew install, um, you know, uh, smart mon tools, and you can actually use this uh, CLI on a Mac. And I think on Mac it goes uh, slash it's like just slash disk zero slash disk one. Uh, in Linux, you're actually, I'll show you, you actually use the actual NVMe device handle slash dev slash NVMe zero, namespace one. Uh, so you can see here, you know, I just have one drive in the system. It's my boot drive. It's my one terabyte drive I just showed you. Uh, so that that drive is gonna come up as slash dev slash SDA. So I'm gonna do a smart CTL dash A, which is all, and then slash dev slash SDA, which is kind of weird because SDA usually is, is SATA in, in Linux, but this is gonna give me the smart data on the drive. Um, now this gives you all the information. So NVMe, uh, there's actually, the smart log in NVMe is actually a very specific thing. NVMe has uh, these uh, identify logs. You can identify the controller and identify the namespace. Uh, this is super useful because on NVMe drives, you can just ask the drive, like what features do you support? And the drive will just report everything uh, in these fields. And that's why if you do these commands on an NVMe drive, you can get all this cool information about all the stuff that your drive supports. And it'll tell you, uh, basically, your, your model number, your serial number, your firmware version, all kinds of good stuff. Your NVMe version 1.4. Uh, and then here's some of the optional commands, uh, optional NVM commands, you know, write zeros, uh, timestamp, 
uh, data set management, trim, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, okay, device self-test, these are some optional admin commands. So format is the way to securely erase the drive uh, from NVMe. It tells you the supported power states. And so these, this is in um, a drive with 8.8 uh, .8 watt, this power state zero. This is a high performance drive, so you generally want it in there. If you had this drive in a laptop, you might go into these low power states, uh, like this, what I think was at uh, 44 uh, milliwatts. Um, yeah, uh, so 0 0.044 watts, uh, so you're super low power for, for idle states. Uh, and then it tells you the uh, LBA size it supports. These are the you know, format sector sizes that you can format it to uh, 512 bytes or 4K. Uh, but this is the actual smart data down here. And so this is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, really the most important thing on the smart data is this critical warning. Uh, now, if you look in the N actual NVMe specification, you'll see what the critical warning means. And this, uh, this is the actual NVMe spec and there's this, you know, section 5.14.1.2 is the smart health information. And if you actually want to geek out on this stuff, the NVMe spec is totally open. You can just download it from nvmeexpress.org and look what all this means. But you have all this stuff that the critical warning reports, but Critical warning is supposed to be an NVMe, like the, you know, zero or one. Yeah, you know, zero, your drive is good. One, something's wrong. And if the one is lit up, you can find out, okay, is it uh, the drive set to read only mode? The drive is broken. There's too many media errors. Uh, is the drive over temperature? So the critical warning bit is supposed to just tell you like, yeah, something's wrong, go look at it. And if the critical warning bit is one, you can go dig deeper and find out what's wrong with the drive. Uh, and so, yeah. Generally, yeah, this should always be zero. If it's not zero, something's wrong with your drive. <laughs> uh, temperature is pretty straightforward. This is just the temperature of the drive reported in Celsius. Um, the thing where I see the most confusion uh, in NVMe is really these next couple ones. So available spare and available sh spare threshold. So uh, when you have an SSD, it has spare blocks. It basically has what we call over-provisioned space or more actual NAN space in physical NAN bytes than actually is presented to the user. So, uh, and now on a consumer SSD, this might be five or six percent more. On a, on a data center SSD, it might be ten to twenty percent more, uh, depending on the drive model. Uh, but basically, the more spare area that the drive has, the more free space it has for garbage collection and the firmware efficiency. And that's why you see kind of on higher endurance drives, you see, you know, a higher amount of spare. Now, this spare, how it reports it, is basically saying, out of all the blocks that you have. Um, how many are retired. And so when an SSD firmware, when it has, when a cell runs out of, of endurance, uh, it'll retire a block and actually that spare should go down. Now, I rarely see this actually reported or changed. Um, you know, basically you, you very, very, very rarely see this change uh, because most of the time people are just using percent used. Um, now, ideally on a drive that's functioning correctly, has good firmware, the, uh, you know, if the available spare goes down, the percent use should be, go, you know, going up very rapidly and so towards the end of the life of the drive you might see that you know this this available spare go from 100 to something that's not 100 um, and if that got very very low you know this threshold that says if it gets below five percent it's going to trigger the smart uh predictive fail and trigger the critical warning uh percent use but this is what we're going to talk about um so this is supposed to be just the dead simple easy like how much percentage is your ssd used so if you've written you know 300 terabytes to your drive and that reports 50% used, then you can expect to write 600 terabytes of total data to that drive before it wears out. Now, percent use should be incrementing on NAND program erase cycles, not on the spec sheet TBW. The spec sheet TBW is reported on a writing amplification factor that the vendor picked. Most of the time, this is the JEDEC specification, which is kind of the worst case. Consumer drives do not do this. They just report some random number uh, that they thought is nice. Um, so that's why it's kind of hard to trust the TBW of the SSDs. Some other people have reported that they could have seen gone well over 100% on percent used. This is bad. This means whoever you bought your SSD from does not know how to code firmware. Uh, it should never be over 100%. So this should be incrementing with NAND program erase cycles. And once you actually exhaust the NAND program erase cycles, this should report 100%. If you're buying a drive from a reputable vendor or a data center drive, most likely this will be incrementing correctly. And the other ones you want to monitor with this are, of course, um, your uh, host write commands. So if you look at this host write commands, um, or sorry, data units written, I'm on the, I looked at the wrong thing now. Uh, so data units written, um, this will basically tell you, you know, smart CTL actually parses it for you. So it tells me, see, I read, I've written 3.11 TB on this drive. This drive is pretty new. 
Um, so, but I've written this, um, you know, 6 million units. Uh, this is a little confusing how NVMe reports it, but if you actually go into the NVMe spec, it basically says, this contains the number of 512 byte data units, blah, 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 one corresponds to a thousand units. So, you know, if you look at this number and we'll just say this is NVMe smart uh, data units written, and that's the number it gives you. If you want to convert this to bytes, you basically take that number, multiply it by 512 and multiply it by a thousand. And that's the total number of bytes. And if you want to take that and divide it by a, a thousand to the fourth, you will have your total number of terabytes. So 3.11, and we're going to look, and this is exactly uh, you know, what it reports here, 3.11 terabytes, and this is exactly what it's going to be. Uh, so, aha, so we've seen something kind of weird here. So the crystal disk info is reporting 2904 gigabytes. So what's going on here? Uh, that's not 3.11 terabytes. Well, let's take a look. If you look at GIB and GB, so GIB would be this same number divided by 1024 cubed, we get 2904. And if you took that same number divided by 1000 cubed, you should get gigabytes. So 3119 gigabytes is equal to 2904 GIB. And so 2904 is not actually gigabytes, it's Gibby bytes. And host TBW does not track GIB, it tracks gigabytes, it tracks terabytes. So be warned, Crystal Disk Info does not report this correctly. Um, okay, uh, so from there, um, you know, you have a bunch of other useful information in the smart, you know, you have power on hours, total number of hours the drive's been powered on, uh, error information, warning critical temperature time. So if you have a drive that's running too hot, you'll see this warning uh, composite temperature time start incrementing. So if that number is going up or you see a high number, that means you're running the drive too hot. Uh, there's a bunch of other really interesting stuff in the smart data. Uh, but, but really, for um, if you want to know the endurance of your SSD, all you really care about is percent used and total uh, data units written. Those are the only two things you care about, really, if you're looking at endurance. Everything else is optional. Um, now, if you're running this... Oh, <laughs> my, cat's, uh, my cat's meowing at me. Give me a cat. Um, okay, so if you're um, doing this on Linux, uh, you would do sudo apt install uh, smartmon tools. Um, it's going to tell me I already have it, which is great. So uh, I'm going to run sudo smart ctl dash scan on Linux, and it's going to tell me. So on Linux, I actually do have four SATA drives and SATA hard drives in the system that are plotting to, and I have four NVMe drives. Uh, the NVMe 3. Uh, is my uh, Optane P5100X. So I'm gonna go do that, slash dev, slash NVMe, NVMe3, namespace one. And this is gonna give me the smart data for my Optane drive in Linux. So it's exactly the same command, it's super easy. Uh, and it's gonna give me all that same information uh, just in Linux. And um, so uh, again, super handy. Uh, now, there's some really other cool stuff you can do with monitoring the smart data. Um, so the other way to do this is through NVMe CLI. So if you do sudo NVMe help or you know, sudo apt install NVMe CLI is, is the actual package. Um, so sudo NVMe, this is the actual NVMe command line utility that can do anything you can possibly want to do in NVMe. So this is very powerful, very dangerous, <laughs> uh, and especially in Linux because Linux has no training wheels. Uh, you can send admin NVMe commands directly to the drive. Uh, there's no, you know, you can basically well, it gives you 10 seconds if you want to format a drive, which basically is a way to securely instantly erase all the data on the drive. Uh, you know, it'll give you a 10 second warning, like we're about to nuke all the data on this drive, but it's, it's pretty unforgiving. Um, but if you do a sudo nvme smart log slash dev slash nvme three namespace one, you know, you'll see this is the same smart data. Now, if you do a dash h on it, human readable, it'll actually just break down um, you know, some of the critical warning bits and we'll give you a little bit more information. If, if that critical warning is a one and your drive is broken, you could run this command and figure out you know, exactly what it's reporting. Um, the other really cool thing is if you do uh, sudo nvme, uh, you can see here that there's vendor plugins and these are super powerful. Um, you know, I, the plugins only work on the, the drives that it says it does, you know, like some Intel plugin doesn't work on any other drives because only Intel's the drive with that extra smart log page. Uh, but if I do sudo 
NVMe Intel, it'll tell me all the cool Intel commands. And there's some actual really useful commands, but uh, one of the ones that they have is called this smart log add or smart log additional. And so if I do sudo NVMe Intel smart log add, NVMe three namespace one, this is gonna tell me some more interesting smart stats. Um, program fail and erase fair, where to leveling count, it's gonna tell me um, CRC errors. So if you're having PCIe bus errors, you can kind of diagnose stuff. But uh, the really interesting thing for endurance is basically looking at NAND bytes and host rights. Now this is an Optane drive. Um, Optane drives, as many people know, don't use actual NAND <laughs> uh, for the media. It uses something called this 3D crosspoint stuff. Um, and it's right in place. So you don't actually have to erase the cell before you program it. This is very unique. Uh, and that's why an Optane drive always has a write amp very, very close to one, which is why it can do sustained performance very well. Uh, on every other SSD in the world, you know, basically uh, the drive has to erase the cell, the NAND cell before it programs it. So you erase in blocks, program in pages. And so this causes this write amplification uh, which is very bad, which basically is, write amplification is basically a, a way to track how efficient your garbage collection is. So a write amp of one, meaning you write exactly one byte of host data for every byte of uh, uh, NAND, you write exactly one byte to the NAND for every byte you write to the host, that's a write amp of one, that's a perfect garbage collection efficiency. Now, um, if your write amp is two, that means you're gonna see half the endurance. If your write amp is four, you're gonna see one quarter of the endurance. So there's many things that affect writing up, like how full the drive is, if it, the drive is getting the trim command, what the sustained write bandwidth is to the drive. So there's lots of stuff that you would want to monitor this. The Intel drives make it very easy to figure out if you have uh, NAND writes versus host writes. Um, and you can just basically take the NAND writes over the host writes and you have your write amp. You just divide one versus the other. Now, um, if you uh, want to actually convert these to TBW and to see if this matches your smart data. I think the way Intel reports this is this number times 32 megabyte chunks. Um, yeah, so I, anyways, hopefully this was helpful. Just kind of a quick overview of reading the smart data from uh, smart mod tools. And um, if you guys want to see, dig into some of the more NVMe stuff you can do through the CLI, let me know. Uh, but all right, thanks.